Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to FM22 Beta. We are on episode number nine, and we are in our first chance to win a trophy this season. It is the final of the Knockout Cup. Uh, we are neutral territory. Sekakuna is mid-table, so we, we absolutely have a chance in this one. But, of course, we remain totally devastated by countless injuries that uh, we have topped the injury charts at every single phase of the season La every last phase of it i mean we have never been less than number one on the charts as modiba chases this one down a little bit too long there again the injuries are still there shalile out he probably would have got that on target we'd probably be up 1-0 right now but Sofranco scrapes the top of the bar and it goes out for the goal kick. So Sofranco in. He's still not good to go for any target. Labusa point blank range. Golden opportunity. Yes, he's a center back. But, I mean, come on. Near post. Tap in. That is a tap in. Two blown opportunities already. XG should be <laughs> approaching two already. Or at least one after those kinds of chances. Uh, Serino's ball is off target. We do recover. Now, we are still dealing with injuries in center back. Asafranco does make it one. That did not appear offside. He's level with his man. He's level. Look at him. They're side by side. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Here's Safranco again. Kudamela, Madiba. Again. And finally, in the back of the net and will stand. We hit the the woodwork for the second time with Safranco already we've missed especially if you count the offside by a few inches because if he's not offside it's a definite goal that one oh that was not the post that was the keeper making an excellent save and Safranco just pounces on the rebound puts it home and we finally do lead 1-0 xg wise another goal should be due it's imminent it's any time according to the xg we are all over them in the early stages of this game but now that a goal has counted how will that change the outlook of this game how will that change our opponent's play style Coetzee lays it off uh, Mavala is now out for the next couple of months Shalile still out for the next few weeks Safranco nearly makes it too uh, Kakana is just coming back our long-term and star center back is finally back and available on the bench. He's still gaining his fitness. He could go for upwards of a half. So Kakana, who's looking pretty tired, is somebody that we could easily sub out uh, to, to bring him in and get him some playing time as we go on. But here's our golden opportunity, and they draw level from nowhere. From zero possession, zero chances, zero XG suddenly one terrible mistake oh my goodness uh zwain zwain just like said here you go open the doorway for him and let him go that is absurd that was absolutely terrible defending and from total domination to we are right back to the drawing board with a level score but kudamela makes a nice play on that one and serena absolutely waste the opportunity we should be up probably three nothing right now kakana with the long throw and the keeper grabs it wow that was an incredible range on that long throw right there that got all the way to the goalkeeper comfortably kudamela lays it off for modiba though who's a bit out of position from the lead up to that as he was pretty deep jolly coatsy he's Reset. Coatsy finds Zwayne. Zwayne gets some space. He's going to cut back in for Coatsy. Should have done better. That's a goal kick. That was a goal kick. That was not a keeper save. Apparently we don't want to mark people on a free kick. The guy is wide open. Inside the penalty. And then meanwhile this guy is blocking our keeper. So he's frozen on the line. Wow. Wow. This is just ridiculous. We're losing 2-1 corner. The Rook lays off for Serino. Serino finds Labusa. Zwayne turns and blasts that away. Zwayne is also pretty tired right now. We're going to go ahead and bring on 
Uh, Nabeni. Swain with the free kick. Kudamela, and we are level yet again from total domination to trailing 2 1. Now we are back in with every opportunity to still win this game and take this trophy. We've made it exciting in the end, at least. Can we turn it into a result? Nadiba is probably going to need a sub here fairly soon. Ricardo starting with a high rating. That's that injured man back in action. Modiba finds some space, runs inside, but loses the ball. Labusa recovers. Nabeni, Nabeni towards the corner. That's blocked, but we're going to get that in. Modiba heads it straight to the keeper. Too far away. Not enough power. 75 minutes. We are going to stay on attacking as we are here for the trophy. We do not want to give this one away, and I really do not want this to go into extra time as that is not a good outcome for us. Ricardo Labusa! Oh. Offside? Okay. Didn't look offside, but looked like he was just fine. Duruk on the reset. He's going to find Sereno. Sereno finds Ricardo outside. And Safranco. Oh my goodness. He has missed so many chances today. That one just a little bit too close to the keeper. Keeper able to punch or grab that one before we get in on the end of it. No counter attack. We've got them under pressure. Now they find a little bit of space. Running towards the corner flag, pull it back, reset, well outside of the box, in the box, blocked, corner. Ten seconds to go until we head into extra time, and Modiba is going to need a sub, which I do not have a proper one. Oh, Morena. Morena is back and available again. That's right. We are going to go ahead and sub Morena here coming out of extra time. That's a decent choice for us. We go. Sereno, Kudamelo finds Moreno. Moreno pulls back, gets Sereno. Sereno up ahead to Moreno. Moreno, that could have been it already. Seconds into the extra time. And we create a good chance. They just get it away. Here's Labusa. Nabeni. Nabeni turns. Kudamela doesn't move. He stays frozen. He had every opportunity to get to that one. Labusa into some space, finds Nabeni. Nabeni takes it inside to Coetzee. Morena turns, blasts it into the defense. Nabeni again in the corner, switches play to Kudamela. Sereno, Morena, that's blocked. That was a poor choice. Not the ball you want him to play there. Daruk, nice one to Jali. Morena. Morena up ahead to Kudamela. Much better ball that time, but this cross is blocked. That's a decent cross. Morena recovers the ball. Gets it to the corner, sets it up for Kudamela. Marina inside. There's, oh, that was a great flash across goal. Again, we recover. We are all over them right now. Marina, bad ball. Another poor giveaway from him. Marina turns inside. He's got to keep going on that one. He's inside, one on one with the keeper. Close in, wait for a defender to close you down, change the outcome, and then lay off, make the extra pass. Not while you're wide open, one on one with the keeper. Drive towards him. Here's Kudamela in the box. His pass doesn't make it. We're getting lots of chances, but we are not able to get somebody on the end of them as the defense just getting in the way right now. Now it's their turn. Definitely under pressure. We're forcing them backwards. Now they finally turn and bring it forwards and find some space and beat the keeper, but it's off the post. Saved by the post. Approaching the, the whistle at the midpoint, and we are at the halftime. I have no subs remaining. We are all over these guys. We are approaching our fourth goal in terms of XG. We just need one more. Daruk, very tired now. Uh, otherwise, we are hanging in there. A lot of tired legs, but they are surviving. It's going to make our next match hard. Our next match is against a pretty good team in the league. Here's a corner kick. Serino is going to take it. Poor. Nobody in that part of the box whatsoever. Normally you say that's a decent ball in, but the keeper not only wins it, but there was no yellow shirts anywhere near. Marina finds some space, takes it to the corner, crosses. Coatsy wins it, but straight at the keeper. Eight minutes. Six minutes. Three minutes. No notable highlights. I believe that is down to fatigue, and we are going to penalties.
for our first hardware of the season. And Ricardo scores the first one. That was not a great penalty, but he does score it. His first action in a year. That was a good penalty, and it's 1-1. So Franco, probably really up to the tempo again for the second year in a row on this. Franco, much better penalty and scores. That was our weakest taker of the five. Can we get a stop? Guess right, but the angle is too much. That was up in the corner. Good penalty, 2-2. Serino makes it 3-2. We're in the lead. Mart. Can we save? Oh, we guess right, and that was not the greatest penalty feel like Onyango could have, should have gotten a piece of that one. Now Kudamela, 4-3. We keep the advantage, but man, oh man, this is tight. Nunez had a good game. Can he score? Oh, we guessed wrong. That was a very savable penalty. It's 4-4. Jali, our second best. Can he step up? No, he does not, and we could lose it here. Jali has not been having a very good season, and that was not a good penalty at all, and it was saved easily. And he blasts it high, and we are going to go to extra kicks. It's Labusa next. We are still in it, folks. And Labusa just beats the keeper. That was a terrible penalty. Terrible. But it goes in. That's what counts. Good Sunday. Can Anyango be the hero? Can he be the hero? He's going to have to be a hero double because if he doesn't stop it here, he's now got to step up and take the kick himself. I love how he didn't come from the halfway line. He came from here, and he scores on Yingo. Now, now he really can't be the hero. He can score to put us ahead and save it to be the winner on both ends. Getting down the list. No, he does not. Daruk, another center back, steps up, and he scores. Oh, this is intense. My heart, it's beating so hard. Oh, come on, we are so far down the depth chart here. Where's the mistake? Where's the poor kick? We've had multiple poor kicks. That was a poor kick. Onyango dives, misses Nabeni. This could be good. It is okay. It's in. That's what counts. 8-7. Oh, this is insane. One miss apiece is all, both in the fifth round of kicks we are all the way to the ninth we are getting very very far down the depth chart the last couple guys on the pitch and on yango guesses right but cannot stop coatsy now coatsy should be good coatsy scores nine eight that's the tenth player there's only one remaining for us two remaining for them come on be somebody who just cannot score be a terrible center back at scoring that was a good kick Anyango has hasn't even been close. Morena. Morena steps up. That was a good kick. And that was our last guy. That was our last guy. We're gonna get into a second attempt here soon. It's 10-9. Nasabata? This is the keeper. This is the keeper. Can Anyango see that he does! He does, and we are winners! Oh keeper versus keeper in the end was the difference, Anyango making his kick and Anyango saving the other keeper's kick, that was the deciding moment. We go from total domination to trailing 2-1, fight back, draw level, have every opportunity to win the game. So many missed chances. They took every opportunity they had, and we missed tons. We tried to give the game away again and again and again, but refused to lose. And on Yango in the end, comes out the victorious one, and of course, rightly so, is the one carrying the trophy right now off the pitch. That is a trophy win, 26 to 12 in the shots, 3.65 to 1.61 in the XG, 10 shots on target. We still only managed two goals. Offside by inches from a decisive earlier goal. So many just chaotic moments that could have should have been so much easier than we made that on ourselves and we go the distance every single player on the pitch having to step up and take a kick and finally in the 11th kick the 11th round keeper versus keeper we come away with the victory my oh my <sighs> let's continue on with our season following two more league matches in which we won both of them one 
pretty comfortably. The other one just a, a tight 1-0 uh, victory as we're still without Shalile. And at times have found ourselves having a, a little bit of difficulty scoring. Well, anyway, we are now just one point off the lead, which is Super Sport United. Everybody's at 14 matches played, and we are now into our winter break. So we have a mid-season break. Uh, technically, we're one match away from the halfway point, as we're going to play 30 on the season. But we're in a good place. Goal differential favors us. We've only had a single loss and then four draws. The problem that we've had, though, is three of those draws have come against some of the weak teams in the league who have hit us on the counter and been able to score. So I kind of feel like I need a second tactic to to develop when we come back from squad break. Uh, but we are uh, at least making some progress. Looking at the competition reputation, you can see that we are the fifth highest reputa- uh, highest league reputation in Africa, which is weird that it's the only African league that you can play in FM22, but that is what it is. Uh, we do not lead the, the goal charts as Shulile has missed a bunch of time. He does have the best average rating. Modiba has the second best average rating. He's been really good when he plays, but he's been injured off and on. Morena, his sub, has also been in, injured off and on, and that's been difficult at times to fill in for both of those. Serena with five assists in that regular standard center mid position. I'm, I've been wondering if I should make some sort of adjustment to how I play Coetzee as Coetzee is not getting a ton of assists, but in that roaming playmaker role, he still at least sets us up kind of for the sequence of things, but he's not the one doing the killer balls. Uh, the league table, we're still on top. It's down to three. I mean, this is less than half of what it was a week and a half ago as we've had multiple guys coming back from injuries. We were at eight about two weeks ago. It's down to three. That's where everybody else is. And one, two, three injuries, zero injuries. We've never had less than three all season long, even when we first started when we first loaded the save it, it's been rough we've survived this much gotten one trophy already and are just one point off the league lead with all of these injuries plus the time frame at the very very beginning of the season that first four matches or so where they were still learning the tactic all of that's behind us hopefully we come back healthy from the the mid-season break which is not going to end all the way until well into February. So we have our entire transfer window just ahead of us, right around the corner, and more news. News being that the takeover rumors, yeah, they're back. It's back on. Same deal or somebody else stepping in, I don't know which, but the takeover rumors now flourishing yet again. Also, uh, now that we've won a trophy, a bunch of guys that didn't want to sign contracts suddenly are like, okay, okay, we got a manager in place that's getting us some wins. We've won a trophy. Yes, I want to stay with this team. And that's making a difference. So we've re-signed a whole bunch of guys. We're in the midseason break. Takeover rumors. It's all on. And injuries down to three. That's big. I'm going to push partway into January. I've been targeting some guys. I've got seven or eight choices. We might be able to sign more than one of them in the transfer window. So that's uh, that's what's next for us couple things going on here as we hit New Year's Day. Uh, group stage has been drawn for the Champions League. And just for comparison's sake, before we uh, go into what our group is, let's look at the competition reputation because this is uh, huge on kind of where we're at. Now, two and a half stars, first five leagues. So we're actually pretty close in, in terms of comparison. Nobody gets three-star reputation. There's no standout. But... Number one is Tunisia, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, all ahead of us. Then it does drop down to two stars where you only have a handful. The Tunisian second league and our second division, uh, both very much near the top of the overall. Sudan, Nigeria, got to watch out for those as well. But that seems to be what could provide us uh, some difficult competition in the Champions League. Now, at this stage, after we've already gone through two rounds, we are now looking at a group stage, proper regular standard group stage, four teams in a group, play each one twice home and away, so six matches, 
that's going to set us up for the quarterfinals at that point with the top two moving on. So looking a lot like the European Champions League from there. Following the draw, this is what we have. We are in Group A with an Algerian, so the fourth-ranked league, and a Tunisian, the first-ranked league team, and then Mauritania. So it looks like we'll have one potentially easier easier matchup where we can go out and claim a couple wins, but then we're going to need some sort of results if we're going to be one of those top two teams going on, some sort of head-to-head results against one of those two sides at the very least uh, to get out of the group stage. Not going to be easy. But also looking here, you've got Egypt, you've got another Algerian, uh, you've got a Moroccan, so all the top leagues. Sudan just below us in the rankings, so Group B, none of it's easy. They're all, what, ranked sixth and above league ranking-wise. Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, so a little bit further down. Kaiser Chiefs get us such an easy group in comparison. You look at that group, and Kaiser Chiefs are the highest ranked team in terms of conference ranking. Wow. Wow, did they luck out. They've got an easy chance to get out of the round. And then we have another Tunisian, Tanzania, another Egyptian side. We have the group of death. We have the hardest group. Group B looks pretty tough too, but group C and, e, C and D look quite easy. So not a good draw for us necessarily. At least there is one team that it looks like we can beat up on, uh, but we're going to have to be at our best against the other two if we're going to get through. Very next day, the news report is right in line with what I said. We have a difficult task avoiding defeat against one of those two squads to get out of the Champions League group stage. One of those squads, the Tunisian one, has won the Champions League four times. Four times they've won it. I believe our squad has won it once in the past. We are not favorites, but we're supposed to make the final. That's going to be really difficult on this occasion. And then the other team, they have a 1,000 capacity stadium. They are fully professional, but... They're in a very, very small conference compared to us. And other than a whole bunch of new contracts devied out to, to players within the team, we have made our first big deal. Uh, we, we are going to lose one player with an expiring contract at the end. We have two guys that are really not interested, but at the moment I don't want to sell them right now. I'd rather get them for the remainder of the season as they are both members of the squad, Mavala and Morena. Nurkovic, though, is somebody we're bringing in from the Kaiser Chiefs, and he's been their top goal scorer in 21 matches. He has scored 26 goals, and we're taking him away because, for the same reason that I'm about to lose some guys at the end of the season, his team doesn't want to miss out on the opportunity to collect. He doesn't want to resign with them. He's His contract was set to expire. Instead of doing the the reasonable thing in trying to get him on the Bosman rule and get him for the for next season. Why not bring him in now, especially when it wasn't going to cost us much? 120000 is all it cost us because they were going to get nothing out of him anyway. So that's a very healthy, we have plenty of money left in the transfer budget. He actually isn't costing us all that much salary-wise. New deal, and we're, we're taking over the current contract and then... Uh, well, no, it looks like the he's going to get a new contract. He's getting a pay raise, so for him it's good. Multi-year deal, and there is our striker problem solved. And he's much better than Erasmus, who we got a whole lot more money than this for. So I'll take that. So I have an interesting situation. Morena is somebody who wants to leave at the end of his contract. He's a good player, and he's done really well. I mean, he's had five assists for us, but... Reeve Frostler is also somebody who has the same scenario. Uh, he's got an expiring contract, and his team is desperately trying to sell him. He's listed for 200 k and I think we could almost get that for Morena. And even though Morena is valued higher in many respects, you look at these two, and Frostler, for me, not only is five years younger, but he's better. In so many ways, his finishing is a little less so, but 
he is better in so many statistical categories. He doesn't have as much flair. Uh, his off the ball is not quite as good. His vision isn't as great. Uh, and those add up. But then he's got so much more to offer in many, many other regards that I think ultimately I'm going to try to do a straight swap for Frostler and Moraine and see what happens. See here, Frostler is much more of a two-way player. The defensive winger role, uh, much more suited. He's technically a fullback where Morena is a, a winger. But in my system, Frostler is a proper defensive winger in that right mid position where Morena is ultimately my backup because even though he's got decent speed, he's lacking in quite a few areas. Just over halfway through the month, we have completed our second deal, and this was the best player available in terms of scouting. So Reeve Frossler, 24-year-old, just turned 24. He was 23 uh, less than a week ago. Attacking fullback. Going to cost us a pretty penny, 195000 plus future stuff that could push that a bit higher. But that's still, that's not bad. Uh, exchange player was just a backup center back who was nothing to us that knocked it down by 5,000 or something. Uh, but the percentage of profit from, from next sale tried to avoid, but we did bring that down. They wanted 30%. We brought that down to 15. Either way, we get him for a pretty acceptable amount. And Frosser is going to come in as that defensive winger. The, this is the one we were looking at just a little bit ago. So uh, defensive winger on that right side, definite upgrade on Morena. I am now l listing Morena for sale because we could always turn around and put that money into somebody else if we do get them sold before the deadline. Uh, but that gives us Modiba, Frostler, Modiba, and Morena. So we're going to be in really good shape on that right wing now. More news on the takeover. It's back on here late in January. This time the offer is down to 5 million. It was 10. So that's really not a lot of money, especially considering what we go through in a season, but the board wants to get out. They want to get out from under it. This is my scouted players list, and from this list, I don't think there's much left for us to do. I mean, just looking at recommendation-wise, there's not many players left on the list. A couple young guys, and in a normal playthrough, I'd be all over that, looking at trying to get some young players in to develop then looking at who can actually contribute now. You got Baggio from the Thai League. We don't know a ton about him. He's already 30 anyway. Ethan Brooks would definitely be a candidate at just 20 years of age. The, this is the type of player that I would most likely be trying to sign in this situation. Aguilar could help the team right away, but the problem with Aguilar who's coming from Cruz Azul, is he's already 34. But most importantly, because we could actually, theoretically, according to the report, get him on a free. They want to get rid of his salary. His salary at one and a quarter million is a bit beyond what we can afford. He would ask for less coming to us, but getting him down into the eight to 900,000 range, we can't afford that. So we can't sign a player for that amount, and therefore... He's beyond our reach. That leaves Makopa. Now, Makopa, we already tried to see, sign in the summer transfer window, and this would absolutely be somebody I would want long term. But I already compared Makopa with Nurkovic. Nurkovic is just a better player all around right now and performing better, significantly better on the season. So, Makopa would be more about your long term. And we technically have the money, so it wouldn't be a terrible signing to go after him anyway and bring him in. And I bet you he could, in our system, be better, do more. Uh, but we've already got four strikers. I don't think we need to get to five. And we do have young ones that we could always play. Uh, if I was doing this long term, I'd be going for Makopa and Brooks and bring them in and bring in a couple of these young guys and just do some long term deals but not necessarily spend everything we've got. And speaking of, we don't have a lot left in terms of the transfer budget or the payroll. So I think that's probably going to conclude our deals, which means we're going to push on into February, into the second half of the season. 
I'm excited for what's to come. A couple of new players to help us out. A lot of guys coming back from injuries. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling, feeling optimistic. I'm the Catalan Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.